In today's lesson, we start a new unit on acids and bases. Now, you've probably heard of acids before, and when you think of acids, you probably picture a big, dangerous vat of chemicals. And acids can be dangerous, but they're actually all around us. They're in our stomachs. They're in our foods, like oranges. And they're in our drinks, like sodas. And so in this lesson, we'll take a careful look at what an acid is. And we'll also look at its opposite, which is known as a base. And lastly, we'll think about the pH scale, which measures just how acidic or just how basic something is. Let's learn. In this lesson, we'll learn to identify acids, learn to identify bases, and we'll introduce the pH scale. Well, as we've mentioned, acids are all around us. And here we see a slice of lemon being used to prepare fish. That lemon contains citric acid, and it reacts with a base inside the fish to begin to prepare it for cooking. So acids are all around us. And if we look in a chemistry textbook, we'll see that acids typically have formulas like this. Here we see HClO4. And we notice that's called perchloric acid. So the names always end in acid. And that makes it pretty easy to know if you have an acid when you have the name written out. On the other hand, it can be a little more challenging if you just have the formula. So say you're just given HCl. How would you know that was an acid? The trick here is that, as you'll notice on this list, all of our acids here start with H. And that's usually the case. So acids often start with H. One really important exception here is water. So water is H2O, but it's not an acid or base. It is crucial in acid and base chemistry, but it itself is not an acid or a base typically. Okay, so how is water important? And secondly, why is this H always there at the start of acids? Well, we can understand both of those questions if we take a look at what happens when we place acid in water. We take HCl, that's one of our acids, hydrochloric acid, and we mix it with water. What happens? Well, H, which is at the front of our hydrochloric acid, actually hops over to the water. So we transfer a hydrogen ion to the water. Let's see what happens when we actually run this reaction. We have a hydrogen ion on the chlorine that's gonna hop over to the water. And when it does, it leaves behind just a chlorine. Now, because the chlorine's a little negative and the hydrogen is a little positive, that means the chlorine ion all by itself is negatively charged. Then we also get that water, but because a hydrogen ion is transferred to it, it's actually H3O plus because we have one more hydrogen ion. And it's positively charged because the hydrogen ion it gained is positively charged. And this right here is actually the key to acids. Anything that makes this in water is in fact an acid. And that's the definition of an acid, a substance that makes H3O plus in solution. And so if you look at this flask that contains hydrochloric acid, you'll see some green ions floating around that are chloride ions. You'll see some red and white molecules floating around that are water molecules. And in some cases, those water molecules have not just two hydrogens, but three. They've gained an extra hydrogen ion. So they have one, two, three. This is what makes that thing acidic. If it makes H3O plus in solution, it's an acid. Now, there's one other way that you'll see acids shown. And that is, they'll just completely ignore the water. Because the water is always there, they'll just take HCl, hydrochloric acid, and they'll show it splitting apart into just H plus and Cl minus. So there's two ways to represent acid in solution. Sometimes we use H3O plus, and this is frankly the more accurate way to do it because that's actually what's present in solution. But sometimes as sort of a shorthand, we'll use H plus. The H3O plus is called the hydronium ion the H plus is called the hydrogen ion or sometimes just a proton. Let's think about why that's called a proton. Well, if you recall, hydrogen has one proton in the center and if it's neutral, it has one electron. So that's a normal hydrogen atom. Well, if you make it positively charged, you get rid of that one electron and then what's left there? Just a proton. So that's why it's also sometimes called a proton. So three terms for you to be familiar with, hydronium ion, hydrogen ion, and proton. Now, what about bases? Like we said, they're the opposite of acids. So here on the right, you see a picture of a stomach. And in that stomach, we have acid. So all of us have stomach acid floating around, and it's H3O+. And sometimes that acid goes up into our esophagus where it doesn't belong, and where our body's not prepared for it. And it can burn our esophagus, and we call that heartburn. 
and it creates a discomfort in our chest. The answer to that problem, if you have heartburn, is to take what's called an antacid. And this is an antacid, which is just another way to say that we have a base, the opposite of an acid. And what we'll do with that antacid is we'll take it and we'll combine it with the acid in our esophagus and it'll neutralize it. Let's take a look at just how that works by understanding better what a base is. So here are the list of formulas you'll see for bases if you took a look in the chemistry textbook. And you'll notice, notice here we don't see the word base, but we do often see the word hydroxide. And hydroxide is just the name for the polyatomic ion, which is OH minus. So actually the way we recognize bases is that they often end in OH. So if you see this ending of OH, which is hydroxide, you know that you have a base. Now let's look at the definition of a base. It's a substance that makes OH minus in solution. OH minus also called the hydroxide ion. And so if I take NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide, a very common base, and I put it into water, it'll split apart into Na plus and OH minus. And it's that OH minus that makes it a base. Okay, so now we're ready to think about why bases and acids are opposites. So here is my stomach. I've added my antacid. So I'm combining an acid and a base. Well, recall that a base in solution has OH minus and an acid in solution has H plus. What happens when those combine? Well, it turns out that two H's makes H2 because, right, we had one H here and two H's there and then we still have an oxygen, H2O. What have we made? We've made water. So we took something that was basic something that was acidic. And when we combined them together, we got water, which of course does not hurt your esophagus. So that's why antacids work. We neutralize them by adding a base to our stomach acid. Okay, now what we'll do is think about the pH scale. It turns out we measure how acidic or basic something is by the pH scale. And really low numbers are acidic. So on the left-hand side of our scale here, we have acids. On the right-hand side, we have bases, sometimes also called alkali. These are just bases. And you'll see here a number of examples. We have the indigestion tablet, also known as an antacid. And on the acidic side, we have oh, our lemon juice and our stomach acid. So we can categorize how acidic or basic they are. And what does that depend on? Well, it just depends on how many H plus ions are present. And the more H plus ions there are around, the more acidic something is. All right, so the pH is actually equal to, mathematically, and we'll use this in a future lesson, the negative log of the concentration, remember these brackets mean concentration in the units of molarity, the concentration of those hydrogen ions. And when you calculate that out, you'll get some number, usually between zero and 14, though not always. And if it's below seven, it's acidic. And if it's above seven, it's basic. Okay, now let's practice identifying acids and bases. So for each of these problems, for each of these compounds below, identify if it would make OH minus, H3O plus or neither in water. So would it make something that's basic, acidic, or neither? So I'll give you a few seconds here to pause the video and go ahead and try your best to answer it. Okay, let's look at the first one. Well, the first one starts with H. That means it's an acid, and that means it's gonna make H3O plus in solution. The second one, or B, ends in OH, which is hydroxide. So that means it's gonna release OH minus into solution. The third one is water, Water, even though it starts with the H, remember, doesn't release hydrogen ions into solution. It's not an acid or a base. So the answer here is neither. It will not make a solution acidic or basic. And sodium chloride, NaCl, it doesn't start with an H and it doesn't end in OH. So we get the same answer there. It's neither an acid or a base. In this lesson, we've learned how to identify acids, how to identify bases, and we've introduced the pH scale. Hey, hey.